So the sons of God, those are, those are the believers, right? Are they only men? You only have male believers before the flood? And only male believers from one lineage? Like, really? Any human interpretation of the sons of God in Genesis 6 is ignoring or is ignorant of the original context for those verses, for Genesis 6, 1 through 5. And that context is Mesopotamian religion, specifically the Apkalu story, which we're gonna talk about in this session. And again, which you should have read about for this class. That means by definition, if you have a commentary that is taking some other view that doesn't interact with the Apkalu material, that doesn't interact, I mean, that, to be fair, that material has only really been collected and sifted and, and put into published form in terms of an article uh, since 2010. So it's been actually very recent. I mean, I used to work for Logos. I got all the resources free. I have tons of commentaries. I have found to date two commentaries, two, that even reference the term Apkalu. They don't talk about it, they don't discuss it. They just have the, the, you can find it in a search in the book. That's it, okay? By definition, if your commentary does not discuss this material, it is interpretation out of context. It is obsolete by virtue of, again, the, the research that's been done more recently. Now, I, I know of publications that commentators could have dipped into this material for. There's one by Ann Kilmer. There's another one by Helga Kvanvig. That's, that's older than 2010. But I'm just telling you, if you go to, I wanna see if, if what Mike says is in the commentaries, it's not. It's not, it could have been had they done better research, but it's not. Now, since 2010, again, when all of this material was sort of, we had a Mesopotamian scholar, somebody who does cuneiform, Amar Anus, go back, look at all the Mesopotamian flood stuff with a specific question of, hey, I wonder where, you know, if the sons of God, Nephilim giant thing, if, if that's part of these flood stories in Mesopotamia, he collected all the information, put it together and wrote an article on it. It's called On the Origin of the Watchers. You can get it on my website, you get it on the internet for free. It's a great article. If you are talking about Genesis 6, 1 through 5 and not interacting with that material, you're interpreting out of context. There's just no other way to say it. So I wanna try to summarize that material that, again, that you've read through, add a little bit to it here, maybe you know, some points of explanation in this session. But essentially that's the punchline. That's the thrust of what we're gonna do here. Now what you do typically get are the, you know, the Sethite view. So let's click out to that my little mouse here. And this is going to be from Unseen Realm, again, from your reading for today. Let's close that. The Sethite interpretation. Again, this is the idea that the sons of God are the line of Seth, and the sons of God are just human. And so somehow that means the, the ungodly element are the women of Cain. Again, the text never says that. It never says any of that. It never makes these identifications. Um, you know, and I go through the litany of, of why this, this view, I mean, the deep flaws that it has uh, in these pages. I'm not going to rehearse all of them to you, but, you know, it, it takes you into some really goofy places. So the sons of God, those are, those are the believers, right? Are they only men? You only have male believers before the flood? And only male believers from one lineage? Like, Really? The, the, the sinners, they're the women, right? The, the men of Seth are good and the, all the sinners are from this other line of Cain. It, again, the text never says any of this. This is a contrived, invented view to distance from the supernatural element of Genesis 6. Now, up until, you know, fourth century, you know, some would go back to the third century with Africanus here, Scipio Africanus, uh, or is it Julius Africanus? I always get the Africanuses mixed up. There's two of them. 
he was the first one to sort of depart from a supernatural interpretation in terms of you know, church thinkers. Augustine was the big one who departed from this view. And since he was so weighty as a theologian, his view carried the day. Now, he, I mean, he had an ax to grind. Uh, he, when he became a Christian, he hooked up with the, uh, a sect called the Manichaeans, uh, had a parting of the ways with them. They revered the Book of Enoch. So, you know, Augustine sort of just turned against all that. Um, that, you know, was part of what, what was going on here in his head to, to get away from the supernatural view of Genesis 6. But up until that point, for centuries, this was a no-brainer. And my argument is that it is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer if you understand the original context and you observe that the people in the ancient world actually did know, they knew that ancient context and interpret it accordingly. And this includes the biblical writers. Now the Sethite view ultimately, I mean, again, I'm not gonna read through the criticisms of it. You read that for tonight, but ultimately the Sethite view, if these are just people, it cannot account for the Nephilim in Genesis 6, 4. If there's nothing unusual going on here, how do we get Nephilim? And this is why Many people also have seen this problem, the people who hold the Sethite view have seen this problem. And so we have to get away from Nephilim, meaning what the ancients thought it meant, which was giants. And now it has to mean something else. Okay, those who fall upon or the fallen ones or, or whatever.